Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning at Payton City FBC. We're so glad that you're here today. Make sure that you drop a comment below so we know you're here. This morning as we go into worship, I wanted to share a verse with you, and it comes from Revelation 17, 14. Together they will go to war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will defeat them because He is Lord of all lords and King of all kings, and His called and chosen and faithful ones. Yeah. 
thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning, church. If you are new to Payton City FBC, please make sure to leave a comment below or send us a private message so we can get in contact with you with more information about our church. In these uncertain times, we want to continue to be for the valley. And in order for us to do this, we, as the body of Christ, we need to give. There are three ways that you can give. One, you can mail your offering to 600 South 4th Avenue, Hayden City, West Virginia, 26159. You can go online at HaydenCityFBC.ChurchCenter.com. Or lastly, you can text any amount to 84321. Please stay tuned and join us for Pastor Dave's sermon, The Ascension of Christ. Good morning, Peyton City FBC. I'm Pastor David Nelson. I want to welcome you to our service this morning here online. Thank you for tuning in. It really means a lot to uh, watch along with you with our families at home until this pandemic is passed. I want to bring you some hope as we continue on in our sermon series of Christ. At this time, if you'll let us know in the comments that you're here or you'll click the like button and then do one more thing for me. Share this on your Facebook page or on YouTube with those in your circle of friends. Let's get the word of God out. Let's bring encouragement and love and the body of Christ together. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Acts today in the first chapter. Let me pray as we begin this sermon of Christ, the ascension of Christ. Lord Jesus, I pray that your spirit will be here with us uh, and throughout our homes, that as we've gathered together here online, that you would fill us with your power as we speak the word of God and we hear the word of God. Help us to receive it with joy. Amen. Acts chapter number one in your Bibles, if you would. And when they had spoken these things, verse number nine, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Jesus ascended into heaven. We looked at his resurrection. We looked at his crucifixion, his death. And we looked at the miracle works that he did because he was God, the deity of Christ, the humanity of Christ. We're going to continue on in this sermon series of Christ. And I want to give you a little taste of what's to come. We've got uh, several more sermons in this series of Christ. Now, uh, share that with your friends as we uh, look later on in the week. Today we're looking at this chapter, Acts chapter number one. While they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud. Can you imagine being one of the disciples and seeing this as an eyewitness of Christ descending into heaven? Paul wrote about it to the Ephesians. He says, therefore seeing, uh, as he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. Now this reference is can be cross-referenced over in the book of Jude and Peter. He led captivity captive and the grave and gave gifts to men. This is a really interesting verse and an interesting topic. What did Jesus do during those three days in the ground? Well, we know this that when he ascended up on high, he led captives, captivity captive. We have freedom in Christ because of the ascension. Since then, we have a great high priest. I love this Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to get into this later on the sermon. This high priest has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly our profession. Don't let your faith waver. We talked about believing and from John chapter one, number 1, verse 12, or maybe it's 14. Uh, as many as believe on him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. It's only through our faith in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ that we can truly have faith that leads to salvation. The saving grace of God is in our confession or our profession of faith that, yes, I am a believer in Jesus. The Bible says, if we will confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we shall be saved, Romans chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 9, just a few, five chapters later, for Christ did not enter into the holy places made with hands. Did you know that Jesus' uncle was a high priest the year that Jesus was born? Or at least when John, his cousin, was born. Look that up uh, and leave the comments what his name was. 
Uh, Jesus didn't enter the holy place of the Levitical priesthood, the one made with hands, which are patterned after the true one. God gave Moses a pattern and David to, for Solomon to build a temple and uh, I think Ezra built a temple and others. Not, not a physical tabernacle like this building here that we worship in. Jesus is not the high priest of this building. He's the high priest on high. He told that woman of Samaria, he said, there'll come a day when people will not worship in the mountains or in the temple, but people will worship in spirit and in truth. That's what we're doing right now in our generation. How exciting that is, that all of our churches are closed, the buildings, but all of our hearts are open because the spirit is where the Lord is. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Jesus did not pass into the holy places made with hands, but into heaven itself. And now he's seated at the right hand of God. He appears in the presence of God on our behalf. Just a few more. First Peter chapter 3, who has gone into heavens and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Over in the book of Psalms, uh, David said that my Lord said unto my Lord, sit here uh, at my right hand and I will make all the earth thy footstool. Jesus is God. This is the deity of Christ and we're to worship him as God. The angels and authorities and powers are subject to our great heavenly high priest who was here on earth and he's no longer here. Can you imagine the disciples as they see Jesus go up into heaven? No, no, Jesus, come back. Don't leave us. What are we going to do? Sometimes we feel right now helpless and hopeless and anxious. And what are we going to do without Jesus? What are we going to do without one another? When my wife and I were dating, uh, before we started to tell each other our true feelings, I love you, and uh, when uh, we really fell in love as we were early on in our dating, we were feeling those feelings, but we wanted to wait a little while longer and make sure that uh, we were serious in this relationship. And one of the things we used to say at the coffee shop we'd meet at, uh, right across from my apartment there in Hot Springs, we would say to each other, especially at church, oh man, my heart would just bump, 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 every time I sat next to her at church uh, down in Bible school. Um, we would say to one another, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. What we're really saying is, baby, I love you. Uh, I can't wait to smooch you and hug you. But for that moment, we were in church and being spiritual. And the Jesus in me, he loves the Jesus in you. Uh, Jesus said of his disciples that um, others will know, the world will know that we're Christ's disciples by our love one for another. What makes us have these strong feelings and this longing to be together as the body of Christ? You know what it is? That's Jesus in you. That's God's spirit in you, bearing witness one with another that we are his. Jesus said, I've gone into the heavens and everything, powers of authority and angels are subject to Jesus. I love Revelation chapter five. You really, the whole book of Revelation. Hey, we've got some time. You ought to read it before we gather back together um, after self-isolation. We need to read this and uh, read this book of Revelation. There's a special blessing to all those who read. Look at chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. You know how many that is? A lot. It's not a real number. It's a big number. Remember, we were talking about forgiveness a couple months ago, and we talked about forgiving 70 times 7. What is that, 490, I think, something like that. When you get to that number, are you just to stop forgiving? No, Jesus was saying a lot. Forgive a lot. All these angels, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. For all you math whizzes that want to figure out the exact number, hey, it was just a lot. All these voices are saying together, worthy is the lamb to, that was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and glory, and honor, and blessing. In the previous verse, we saw that everything was to be in subject to him. All these high, important things and powers were to be subject to him. And now, as we're subject to that one that's worthy, 
We're to give him riches and power and wisdom and glory and honor and blessing. How we love our Jesus. And where is he? Yes, he's in our hearts, but you know he's at the right hand of God in heaven where he belongs. Round about the throne because he is God. He ascended. After his earthly work was done, he went to finish the work and intercede in heaven for us. I want to talk to you now about what we're to do now that Jesus has ascended. Look in your Bibles, if you would, at Hebrews chapter number 4. We're going to kind of uh, focus out of that text, Hebrews chapter 4. And we looked at, because he goes to the Father, uh, uh, he will send me no more. John chapter number 16 says, Of righteousness, because I have gone to my Father, and you will see me no more. He foretells to his disciples before he ascends that he's going to leave them. In chapter 14, he says to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, uh, he who believes in me will do the works that I do also and will do greater works than these because I'm gone to my Father. Only once Jesus ascended into heaven did the disciples truly have power. Now, they had gone out two by two and they had tried to cast out miracles. And some of them were successful. They had gone different things and healing. And the disciples were some pretty incredible Christians. And while they followed Jesus, they were included in his wonderful, miraculous, supernatural ministry. But Jesus said, that is nothing. That is little league. When I go to my father, big league things are going to happen. Greater works than these because I go to my father. That's 14, 12 of John. Uh, John 14, 28 says, you have heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am returning to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to my Father. Wait a second. Imagine you're Peter, right? Or you're John the Beloved. Jesus says to them, Peter, I'm leaving, and someday I'm going to go up to my Father. And Peter says, now, Jesus, what are you talking about? Aren't you going to build a kingdom here? Aren't you going to be our Messiah, our Deliverer, our Savior? Why are you going to leave? Well, that's not what my ministry is about. My ministry is about saving and to seek and to save that which was lost. i got to be busy about my father's work. It's not political. It's spiritual, supernatural. Oh, okay. Well, why are you going to leave us, Jesus? We need you. Who's going to do all the miracles? Because I go to my father, for my father is greater than me. Can you imagine Judas Iscariot, what he was thinking? And Simon Zelotes, Simon the Zealot, he was zealous of political ambition and uh, military rebellion against the oppressive empire of Rome. He was a loyal, fierce Jew. If you read about the Maccabean Wars and other times, if you look at the book of Joshua uh, and the conquest of Canaan under Moses. These were fierce people that believed in personal and communal social freedom. As Americans, we believe this Judeo-Christian principle of God's law and the value of mankind. And we don't like to be fettered. We don't like to be controlled. We don't like to have someone tell us how and where and why. And yet, Jesus said, I'm going to my Father, and if you love me, you would be excited about that. Judas, I'm sure, and Simon and others, they were concerned about today. They were consumed with their oppressors. They were consumed with their situation rather than the fact that they got to walk with Jesus. They got to know him and they got to ask him questions and they got to watch him do miracles and they missed it because they were taking their eyes off of the Messiah, off of the Son of God, and putting it on the immediate. As Christians today, we need to be careful that we keep our eyes on Jesus. John chapter 16, verse 28 for I have come from my Father, and I have come into the world. As I said, I am leaving the world, and I am going to my Father. It was several chapters later that Jesus actually ascended up into heaven when we get from John chapter 16, John chapter 21, into the book of Acts. We're going to go back to the book of Acts, and uh, before we get there, I want to go through one more time. The coming from the Father, we call that the Incarnation. Jesus, who was spiritual like God, 
took on flesh. That's the incarnate, the, to become flesh. And he manifested himself here. And then when he ascended, it was his glorification. He's going to his father to become the Godhead again, the heavenly Godhead. Jesus is not in your heart. <laughs> uh, we teach our children, pray and ask Jesus in your heart. And what we mean is pray and receive new life through the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus taught, that you had to receive him, and he is the Holy Spirit. God is the Holy Spirit. There are three which bear witness in heaven, and they are one. John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter one, uh, 5, I think it is. The final exaltation. When Jesus receives his bride, now this, we're getting to the second coming. Here Jesus is in heaven. Someday he's going to come back again. And death and sin and the curse and the unbelieving will be cast into the lake of fire. And that holy, 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 worthy is the Lamb, that Messiah, that Jesus, will be worshipped and receive all glory and power. His final exaltation. The babe in swaddling clothes. The impoverished child born into a enslaved people. To him. To Jesus Christ, the son of David, Jesus of Nazareth, to him every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus came to the earth to do the will of the Father. He's ascended up into heaven and he continues to do the work of the Father. We know Jesus as we know God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And that was the incarnation. He revealed himself to the shepherds, and then he revealed himself at his baptism that he is, in fact, the Son of God, and he began to do signs and wonders. That's the revelation of God, of Jesus. He ascended back to God, and then he will be exalted. I remember it being taught to me this way in my church growing up. Pastor Schindler taught me this. Jesus went up so the Holy Spirit could come down, so the church could go out until Christ comes back again and receives us up with him. And then sin will be no more, death will be no more, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, so shall we ever be with the Lord. God made Adam and Eve so that he could walk with them in the cool of the evening, so they could worship him and know him. God made us for his glory, and we sinned. And Jesus had to come back and redeem us back from sin, death, and the grave. He had to pull us from the devil's grips and bring us back that we could know the Father. Why is it important that Jesus has ascended? Because we need to pray. Um, we need to pray to our Heavenly Father. I'm not going to take the time to read Acts chapter number 1. I would have read verse 1 through 15. I want to get now to Hebrews, and I'm sorry for that. Hebrews chapter number uh, 4, I want to wrap this up. Uh, verse number 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, what should we do? He's passed into the heavens. What does that mean for us today? Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. I'll read it again. Seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, because we have this great high priest, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I'm going to give you four things that we're to do because of Christ's ascension. We as Christians need to do four things. Here they are. We need to pray. We need to hope. We need to work. And we need to abide. Let me give it to you again. We need to pray. We need to hope. We need to work. And we need to abide. Jesus has gone that the Spirit might come. As we pray, we're to pray believing. We're to pray humbly and expectant with great anticipation. Jeremiah said, call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What Jesus wants to do for you is greater than what you're asking for. And Jesus said to his disciples, he 
to have not, because he asked not. If we would only go to him and ask and knock and seek, we will find. The problem, Christian, is that we're not praying. Have you prayed through your church directory? Have you prayed over those in our church family who you love so dearly? How about your own family? Have you prayed for your uncles and your aunts and your cousins? Have you prayed through your immediate family, your wife and your children, your parents, your nieces and nephews? We need to love and we need to pray believing. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know what the problem is with our prayer? It's not effectual. We pray and James says we ask a mist, a vapor. It's an empty prayer that we may consume it upon our lust. Lord, give me a new Porsche. Rub the lamp. Jesus is going to give us all these things. That's called the prosperity gospel. It's this idea that if we say, Jesus, you have to do this, he's obligated to us. That is not what the book of James says. We ask these things because we're greedy and we have consumed upon the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and God is not anywhere near that. We need to have our prayers answered by praying effectual. That means not having sin in our heart. I think it's the psalmist who said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. As you're praying, do you feel your prayers are ineffectual? It may be because of sin, unconfessed in your heart. Certainly we all sin, but the Bible says in 1 John, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you're taking notes along with our sermon today, maybe read the book of Psalm chapter 51. If you've got this sin problem in your heart that you can't get over, this besetting sin, confess it to God and he will hear your prayer. He'll cleanse it and then you'll have your prayers answered effectually. The Bible says we're to pray fervently. Fervently is like Christ prayed in the garden. Can you imagine looking down the barrel of Calvary? It's coming. You're going to be taken. You're going to stand and be mocked and shamed. And then you're going to be hung on a cross and forsaken by God. And Jesus in the garden says, Father, let this cup pass from me. And as he's praying for his will, he sweat, the Bible says, as it were, great, great drops of blood. He was sweating profusely. His body was anxious. I remember the night I got ordained. And I was down on my knees over here at the church, and um, my parents were sitting over here in the front row. And as I knelt there, a lot of the deacons from the church, this is a bigger church, and a lot of the pastors, my pastor who I mentioned earlier, he came and he put his hand on my shoulder, and uh, uh, Mr. Carpenter put his hand on my shoulder, and uh, Mr. Henniger, and one after another, and all of a sudden, I'm kneeling here, and the gentle hand of all these large pastors and deacons is weighing down on me. And as I got up, my brother took a picture of me on the old, uh, you know, rip, 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 click picture cameras. And my eyes are all broken out here. As I'm praying, I'm praying earnestly. They're committing my life and I'm committing my life to serve the Lord and to give myself for the ministry. And the weight of the situation, the intensity in which we prayed physically showed itself just here, just a little bit. I had like little raccoon eyes, you know. Um, Jesus, as he's in the garden, his body sweat as it were great drops of blood. What intensity. The disciples went out to do a work for the Lord, two by two, and they came back with their tail between their legs. They said, Lord, you sent us out and we can't do these miracles. Jesus said, this kind, what you're trying to do, Whatever you're trying to accomplish in your Christian life, this kind, whether it's your children getting right with God or whether it's your spouse being reconciled with you or whether it's enduring a sickness or a disease, you guys are going through some difficult, difficult things. My wife and I were praying together for the church and uh, without mentioning the situation specifically, I just talked to the Lord about uh, the different events happening in your lives. She said, I didn't know 
there was that many things happening. You guys are carrying burdens, and I'm carrying them with you. And Jesus said to his disciples, if you want to cast out devils, if you want to uh, overcome this kind, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. When was the last time you skipped a meal? When was the last time you delayed your breakfast and just prayed a little longer? Or maybe your lunch, or maybe the whole day. When was the last time you went to bed hungry and got up the next day and went to bed the next night hungry? Jesus fasted for 40 days. His own disciples couldn't pray with enough intensity, with enough fervency to stay awake. We need to pray boldly, believing, humbly, expecting, and anticipating because God wants to answer your prayers exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. Not only are we to pray, but we're to hope. Hope that the true King of heaven and earth, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is on his throne. It's not a hope as if, boy, I, I sure hope the Lord's on his throne. No, it's a hope because he is on his throne, and he's in control of this situation, of every situation in our lives, and he will reign for all eternity. I heard a song a few summers ago, and a big choir sang it. He will reign. Man, it, it, it brings shivers to me right now as I think about this powerful song. He will reign forever. And because Jesus has ascended, because he's on the right hand of God, we have hope. We need to pray boldly, and then we need to work. We need to work. The Bible says, work for the night cometh when no man can work. Jesus came to work the work of him that sent me. He had to be busy about his father's business. And Jesus continues to work on our behalf as our intercessor before the Father. Because Jesus has ascended, we should work for him through the Spirit to the glory and to accomplish the will of the Father. He has an eternal purpose, and it's not our flesh. It's not our earthly desires. It's not our uh, willful ambition. We need to sacrifice that like Jesus did in the garden. He said, God, if, I, if you can get this cup Pastor, that's what I want, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Whatever you're going through, we pray in the will of God. And finally, we need to work, hope, pray. We need to abide. Abide in his presence, empowered by the Holy Spirit to defeat the gates of hell. Not conformed to this world, but transformed as ambassadors to reflect the kingdom of God here on earth. That is the duty of mankind, to bring glory to God and to bring many sons to glory. We are to go out to the highways and hedges to compel them to come in. That's why it's important that while you're at your homes watching, you need to share this with your neighbors. This is an unprecedented time when the gospel has gone out in this generation, more than any other generation. Back in the 1800s, there was a great missions emphasis and people would get on a wooden boat or, or a steamship, and they would travel to Africa from Scotland. They would travel to India. They'd travel to China. And they'd bring the gospel to places where they had never heard the gospel before. Today, we, we've got clicks on our Facebook from the Philippines and from China and from Australia. All around the world, people are watching. And it's for us to broadcast the gospel. Abide with him. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed and let his light reflect throughout this world. And that light, we're going back to John again. We just can't get away from the book of 1 John chapter 1, or John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light was life, and the light was light, and the light was the life of men. <laughs> and man sat in darkness, and he came into his own, and his own received him not. We have received the light, and it's for us. Get your fingers out, boys and girls. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I can't believe I'm singing in my sermon. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. The love of God in us, the Jesus in me, should love the Jesus in you. And we need to love our neighbors as ourselves and share God's love. 
the ascension of a loving Savior to our loving Father has given comfort by an abiding Holy Spirit. The Comforter has come. Pray, hope, work, abide, rest in the life of Christ. He's ascended to heaven for you. He's working on your behalf. He's interceding to the Father. Abide, rest, be comforted. Because God loves you so very much. Hey, City, First Baptist Church, we love you so much. Thank you to all of our friends who are watching online. God bless you. Let your light shine. We'll see you again soon.